Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. I am a self-publishing comic book artist, writer, creator. If you enjoy this YouTube channel, if you find my videos useful, if you enjoy seeing my creative process here online, you can get additional bonus videos, additional blog posts, get access to my comic book pages and artwork as I create them on Patreon at patreon.com slash G-E-R-I-M-I. If you'd like to get a preview of my comic book artwork, you can see get downloadable PDFs of pages at comics.jeremy.net. And if you would like to actually purchase physical copies or on Amazon uh, Kindle, you can go to amazon.jeremy.net. That will take you to my Amazon author page where you can pick up copies of my current series, Morningstar, which is the story of Lucifer's Fall from Heaven, told as a Western, or my previous graphic novel, Eye of the Gods, a psychological, th psychological thriller about a man cursed with visions he cannot control. So first off, um, apologies for those that follow the, uh, the live stream regularly. I missed last week's episode. I had some uh, family engagements I had to take care of. Could not be avoided, but uh, you know what? Sometimes real life is uh, and family is, you know, well, always more important than uh, just being online. But... <clears throat> Just thank you for the patience for those that, uh, that follow weekly, and we are back to business as usual. So, we will start with, it's the start of the month, so I have all of my figure drawing work from the previous month of, uh, of July. There might be a little bit of stuff in here from, uh, from the end of June. For those who are new to the channel, I attend figure drawing classes weekly at the Animation Guild in Burbank, California. I am still growing and learning as a comic book artist, as a comic book creator, writer, artist. And I feel like it's very important to share the process that, for me, learning is an ongoing thing. I see folks are already popping up in the chat. I see uh, our regular Star Wolf, stalwart Ion Rocks is here. He says, okay, I forgive you. I appreciate your forgiveness. Namaste. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so figure drawing for me is I often equate it to weightlifting. The more you do it, the stronger you get, the less you do it, the weaker you get, but there's never a point at which you are done, which you have mastered it. There's always more to learn about the figure, about anatomy, about posing, about lighting, about developing the form. I continue to share not just my creative process of making comics, but my continuing educational process as well. So all of these drawings I frequently post blog posts both on social media and exclusive ones on my Patreon. And accompanying those blog posts, I usually will have either pieces of comic book art, work in progress, or I will have some of these figure drawings. So part of this is me just going through and giving myself a bit of a self-critique. And part of it is also me just going through and curating. I'm picking out which ones I am or am not going to use in the blog. Now, I can tell you because this page has uh, like a note for the date at the top, usually whenever I start a particular class, I'll make that note so I know what month it's from. And generally speaking, it is very rare for me to ever like any of the drawings from the first like set that the model does. These are all five minute poses here. And usually in that first like 25 minutes of the class, our instructor does not... Um, does not believe in in warm ups. You just says you got to come in. Um, I, I take classes with Carl Ganas at the uh, the the Animation Guild. Um, I see uh, Aaron's in the chat. How you doing, man? Thanks for thanks for showing up. Um, <clears throat> warm ups. So Carl Ganas doesn't necessarily believe in warm ups. He believes you just come in, you do what you do. So in each pose, you should be trying to do the, the best that you can with, with whatever tools you have at the moment and just dive right in. Mostly at the beginning of class, I hate all the drawings. I would say that I do think the face on this one is a kind of cute. So if I put any in the blog, that one might go in there. But the rest of these on this page, not so much. I see uh, Ordinary Lionheart is in the chat as well. Hello. Thanks for, for stopping by and, and joining us. We're just going through a bunch of figure drawings. Now, what frequently happens is after I have that first pass of drawings that I'm not happy with, I will go in and I start trying to deconstruct the figure and understand what it is that's wonky. And sometimes I get in there and I'll do sketches and sort of work it out and get flow for the next set of poses. Sometimes they get even worse than they started. Like if I were to compare this page, the first page to the one after it, this to me is infinitely 
less attractive. Not attractive in the sense of, oh, it's a pretty drawing. It's more of, it's less attractive in the sense of accurately depicting form, volume, and anatomical structure. This one, this is even wonkier than what I started with. Sometimes I go in and I get a little bit, I overwork the drawings too much in trying to find the answers and then I need to pull back out, simplify. And I would say that this is me trying to pull back out and simplify, but even with these poses, there's still none that I would consider worth including in my, uh, my blog. You know, and another reason that I feel it's important to share a lot of this figure drawing work is because I think many artists are afraid to start producing work because they're not good enough. And I share those same fears that a lot of artists have, but you, know, you don't get to become a good artist unless you put in the work and figure out why things are bad and the problems that you're having. So for me, sharing this process is not about me showing off that I've done things poorly. It's more sort of like I'm showing you how many things I have to work at um, on a given night in figure drawing class or over a number of weeks in a month before I get a handful of drawings that actually convey what I mentioned before, anatomy, volume and structure, uh, light tone, and hopefully have a bit of poetic art to them, capture something that's, that expresses the spirit of the model. So again, the same with these. This was an exercise that we were doing where we were lighting the figure from two, um, from both the, uh, lighting them from the left side on the first pose and then the right side on the other. And I think it's a great exercise. My biggest problem was that I spent way too long on this. I probably should have drawn them smaller and gotten right into the lighting to just, I was drawing this like it was a 10 minute or 12 minute pose when it was a five minute pose. And I really needed to just get down to business, which is a bad habit I have. Now, this here for me is what I consider my, uh, my biggest tool for problem solving when I'm working on figure drawing or when I'm working on anything for that matter is doing cross contours. And what cross contours are, are basically, well, a cross contour is when you're doing, you know, a normal contour line follows the, uh, the direction of the form. A cross contour is sort of like if you do a, a cross section of a figure, for instance, you know, I should really just make sure that whenever I'm talking about figure drawing, I have my figure drawing pencils out on the table in case I want to demo anything. Okay, grab those. Oh, and I see Aaron's got some comments. He said, uh, my approach is entirely different. Never did figure drawing class for any single figure just to study it. I think it's a waste of time. You're gonna do it anyway. Um, do it on a page and move along. You know what? I admire that, especially considering how awesome your artwork is. I've definitely you know, checked out some of your, your pages you have, you've um, had online. I can't remember if it was your art station I was looking at, but I definitely was looking at some of your work. Um, I admire that boldness. For me, the reason why I do figure drawings is because for many years, just drawing out of my head and looking at anatomy books wasn't enough. My artwork was improving very slowly, but I was reinforcing a lot of bad habits that I basically had for most of my artistic life. And it wasn't until I started taking figure drawing classes and comparing what the concept in my head is to the actual model that I started to improve. So. You know, I admire the path that you took to getting to where you, you've taken. For me, I think I started with trying what you did and it just, I didn't improve quickly enough. And I have found that since I've been doing figure drawings, I've seen a distinct improvement in my work. Now, mind you, my work is still not where I want it to be. But the fact that I found a path through studying figure drawing that did show noticeable improvement, you know, that, that ended up being the, the path that I stuck with. Because I mean, I've been drawing for most of my life. It wasn't until I started taking figure drawing classes that I really saw a, a, a steady improvement. So when I'm talking about cross contours, like let's say that, you know, normally a contour line is just the outline of a form. Like for instance, let's say I'm drawing a cylinder.
you know, the contour is the, the outline of the cylinder. Now, you could say that these lines, like if I were to put in some lines, like a 3D grid, you could say that these lines are also contour lines because they're running parallel to the, the main contours of the form. A cross contour would be as if you were drawing a cross section or if you were drawing a grid, like a 3D um, wireframe. That's kind of what, uh, you know, that's what uh, the cross contour forms, whatever it is. It doesn't matter whether it's a car, a human head, a figure. If I'm having trouble with the anatomy, then what I'll do is I'll do a sketch on the side, or maybe I'll just draw right on top of a vertex, basically treat the figure as though I'm making a 3D model. And these grids, what they do is they help me understand what the form is doing. Because that's how you depict volume and you depict structure. You have to understand the form. And whenever I am doing drawings, like for instance, this one below that just feels a little, it just feels lumpy. It doesn't look like completely expressing what the figure is doing. More of, nine times out of 10, the reason why I have that problem is because I don't understand what the form is doing, meaning these cross contours. Now the idea is that once you draw in these cross contours, you can take what is a cross contour. Like let's say this large mass on the cheek. The way that it's here with this, this grid on it, that grid can represent, I have to move these books over a little bit. Let's say that this egg shape here is the cheekbone. Now if I very lightly, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'm very lightly putting in sort of that, that egg shaped grid but what you can do is that grid can become a representative, a placeholder for tone. So you want to say that, let's say that the, the core shadow, let's say it starts turning away from the, the light right around here, and then it goes into shadow over here, and then you get a little bit, it lightens up a little bit, and there's a little bit of reflected light down here. Really, all I'm doing is I'm just taking those cross contours and I'm turning them into tones. And that's how you can depict volume. That's how you can, it can help you understand the volumes that you're struggling with. So this is just something that I have found useful when I go and I analyze my own drawings. And it's not necessarily that I will grid this out on any drawing I do. I actually don't do this very often. I use it as a diagnostic tool when I'm doing a drawing and it's not coming out well. I see uh, my nephew Clay in the chat. How you doing, Clay? sharing some figure drawings with folks online. <clears throat> this is what I do every week. I go to a figure drawing class and just run through uh, all of the work that I do there. So that's cross contouring. To be honest, as an interesting, I don't know, exercise of a, a snapshot of a demo, I think I may put this one in the blog. So, so far, even though it's not a great drawing, it is something that explains or shows what I'm trying to learn and work with. So I think this one I will save. Pardon me for a moment while I have a, a sip of coffee. Onward. So in this class that I've been taking, we're studying heads, hands, and feet. And so here are a bunch of five-minute hand poses. This one is just, again, much like the heads, when I start with my first set, they are usually pretty wretched. So... This one I'm not a fan of, but then very quickly I tried to key into the things that I'd already picked up in terms of uh, drawing the head. You know, just simplifying the volumes, getting down to what are the areas that are turning away from the light, what's turning towards the light, keeping that lighting consistent and trying to describe volumes. So I may just include this drawing alone, probably not that one. <clears throat> And something that I've noticed through this entire month, really this entire semester of figure drawing classes is that I've spent a lot more time, a lot of drawings that are kind of half finished or I don't get into close enough to completing them. I've been spending a lot more time laboring over the drawings, analyzing them, trying to think through and fix what I'm doing wrong instead of just diving in, making the drawing and then assessing and fixing the drawing, erasing here, adding there. <clears throat> and so, I think that's something I need to try and get back to is 
getting down to the basics and making the drawing, even if it's not a polished drawing that I would, you know, say this is like a finished illustration that I would sell or something, but just trying to get all of the elements that explain what I'm trying to describe, you know, making sure that it feels like it has all of the, the outlines, all the forms blocked in, the basic lights and tones, the basic anatomy, like all of the things that are on this page are very sketchy and, and incomplete. Now this one is sketchy, but it does feel like it has all of the volumes. There's problems in here, the anatomy of the thumb, particularly the upper part of the thumb is way too squashed out and flattened. It doesn't feel volumetric enough. But um, turn the light a little bit more towards the, there we go. But yeah, even though this thumb is a little bit too squished, it's, the problem is that it should be larger and wider in here, and it's a little too, it's, it should be larger, that, that upper phalange. But then the fingers down here feel like they get a, have a nice sense of volume, even though this one in here is a little, a little squished as well. Yeah. It's not horrible, but it's not good enough to go in. If I had fixed those anatomical errors there, I probably would have put it in. See. These are some heads that are just uh, expressive, a little bit of head and hand together. And I think it's a really good exercise. I just didn't execute it particularly well. This one is closer. I like it better, but still not. It's just better than, it's still not something I would say is a great drawing. It's just better than the, the first passes of the same concept of the head and the hands together framing each other. But uh, again, that's me belaboring it in five minutes instead of drawing something really quick. Um, part of it is that I tend to take classes that have longer figure drawing poses instead of doing much gesture drawing. So, I mean, yes, every drawing starts with a gesture, but I think that because I haven't spent as much time doing just gesture drawing in classes, that I may take five minutes getting around to just get locking the gesture in instead of locking that in in the first, like, one, like, first minute to 90 seconds and then getting into adding all of the additional volume and anatomy. Let's see. These are back to five minute heads, a different night. And again, like I said, the starting out poses, even though I may be getting some of the, the actual mechanical structures of the face, they still don't feel particularly fleshed out. These are a little bit better. The nose is still a little bit out of proportion with the head. Um, I feel like it could be pulled down a little bit and a little bit more of a sense of volume on the bridge of the nose. So you can actually feel that, that distance between where the eyes are and the, the base of the nose. I feel like this feels a little bit too compressed even though it's at a, <clears throat> even though it's at a very low, at a, at a very low worm's eye angle looking up at it but overall you know i think that these two they have a bit of character to them a little bit of melancholy these fingers are horrible that said i do feel like the, the drawings as a whole they just they feel more interesting to me i think that these might go in now this one is interesting to me just because of its simplicity uh, I certainly don't think I'm as good as the artist Trad Moore, but the comic book uh, creator Trad Moore, I think that the way that Trad Moore creates full sense of volume but does it without hatching, that he just has these full vo forms that are encompassed in line that look really beautiful in his work. And I feel like this is something that when I was drawing it, it reminded me of his approach and said, well, if I'm going to pursue doing something that's more linear, his work is something that's good to use as an inspiration and a, a, a touch base for. So, and these are eight minute poses. So most of them have been five until now. <clears throat> and then this one, yeah, this one, another eight minute pose. And it feels probably closer to what I would hope to get. I was probably using a, a pencil that was 
I was probably using a 2B instead of a 4B, so a little bit harder than what I'm used to. I'm used to using a, a 4B, which is really nice and soft. A 2B, you know, a little bit harder. Um, and then if I really want to get a lot of tone and shadow in there, it's like I feel like I have to go in and work it a little bit more. And I think this night, this was a little bit longer than eight, and I was just sort of getting into almost obvious like just experimenting and, and playing with it, being a little bit more cartoony. And I will tell you that even though this drawing feels a little bit more finished, I don't really like it that much. So I don't think this one will go in. Oh, I see Amaris is in the chat. Thanks for joining us. We're going through a bunch of figure drawings. <clears throat> this one reminds me a little bit more of like a character out of Frank Miller's Sin City, even though it's not all flat blacks. But it has that grim pulp feel, obviously with the hat. He, it just kind of says pulp to it. So this particular night, we were doing a little bit more cartooning of the character, trying to get, you know, more of their personality into it at the expense, you know, hopefully not at the expense of, but if we have to let go a little bit of the anatomy to get more of the character and, you know, get some feel into it, that's kind of what we're going for. So a lot of these, there's a little bit more exaggeration in pushing the forms. <clears throat> And again, this one, same model, but I actually kind of made him feel a little bit more like uh, like the shadow. And I think this is one that I like the drawing overall, but I probably should have spent, if I, I probably should have spent a little bit more time during the break, polishing up, the, um, adding a little bit more tones and volumes. The, the hat above feels very, very flat, but no, it's not bad. This one also an eight minute pose. They get exaggerating the character and the feel, but this to me probably feels the most complete of a drawing that I usually do in, in figure drawing class. Um, I would say I usually if I do if it's longer than eight, if I'm drawing during a break, I put a little plus there. So it's an eight plus. And this was probably something where it was an eight minute pose, modeled on a break, so I maybe had like another five minutes to add in different tones and, and balance and and, and details and finish it up. So in the end, you know, we're looking at something that's more like, you know, a 12 minute drawing. So not bad for 12 minutes. This one will go in the blog. <clears throat> oh, I see some comments in the chat. Amara says, um, designing an artist backpack. Um, because I could figure out then book situation. My sister asked me to help her design a backpack, uh, design a, a back for art materials. Hmm. Anything anyone would like um, to see specifically? Oh, a back for art supplies. So I guess she's asking if you were going to have a, a backpack for art supplies, what would you want to see? Well, Ideally, I would probably build the backpack around being able to hold a small artboard. Or actually, an interesting idea would be to, if you were to make an artboard that has straps, like a, a small board, a small artboard, let's say like a, a 12 by 18 or 11 by 14 artboard, maybe if you were to build that into the backpack so that when you take the backpack off and you take the straps, you flip it over, and then it's got a drawing surface, and then the other side of the back is almost like a cushion to sit on your lap. Um, yeah, I think that having an, an artboard built into the backpack would be pretty cool. And then beyond that, you might want to have something where it's got like customizable pockets that can hold different sizes of art trays. Because everyone's got different stuff they're going to have. Some people are going to be painters and going to need tubes and brushes. Some people are going to be all pencil. Um, I don't imagine you'd really need an artboard if you're drawing on an iPad Pro. But I think something that would allow the most flexibility for the most number of artists where they can set up their gear and have them all stored away. But also, I'm the type of guy where I've got a large art bag, and then within that bag, I've got, like, you know, pencil cases for, for figure drawing gear. And then, let's see, where is my art bag? Oh, 
Like with my bag, I have like, you know, a pack that has all of my comic book creating stuff. So I've got brushes for inking on one side, pencils in the middle, uh, mechanical pencils, and I've got a... Uh, I think there's some pens behind here. There's some pens in there and then pencils as well. Then I have like a separate pouch I have for more ink pens. So I think probably as opposed to, it's really just having the proper amount of storage for, uh, for different types of uh, tools. And probably have room for an one or two art books as well. Cause I figure maybe you're carrying a reference book or an anatomy book with you, or whatever research you have for the project you're working on. So those are things I would look for in a, uh, an art backpack. Sounds like an interesting project. Good luck with it. Um, okay, back to this one. This is another eight minute pose. And I would say that this, uh, yes, I'm gonna put this one in the blog. This is probably more of an accurate representation of what I'm able to accomplish in eight minutes on a drawing that I don't hate. Because I still don't think that this is a perfect drawing, but I feel like I've got the right sense of character, volume, and proportion. And those are the three things I'm trying at, at the basic level. That's what I want to get into any particular drawing. And a lot of times I usually only get one or two of those things in a drawing. So being able to get all three of those in a five or an eight minute drawing to me feels like a win. So, and, so this feels like a sex, successful execution of an eight minute pose. And yes, we'll go on a blog. And this one, I would say probably the same. I didn't really get anything at the ear. I left the ear very unfinished. And again, the hand, I didn't, the hand, both unfinished, I'm pretty happy with it. And in this particular model, Andy, is just really fun to draw. I think that's probably a big part of it. Sometimes um, just having a really good model you know, is really inspiring. And you may find that your work comes out better on a particular night because of who you're drawing and not necessarily because of your own artistic skill. I mean, a good artist, I feel like, should be able to make any model interesting, breathe life into them. But sometimes the model elevates your work. Of course, sometimes you have models that are so elegant that you spend all of your time trying to capture that beauty and your drawings come out worse because you're trying to draw something that is unto itself ethereal. And chasing that ethereal beauty can be, it can be frustrating sometimes. It's like when you're drawing and you're like, my, mo my drawing will never look as good as the model actually looks. Um, I think these were, yeah, these are two minute poses of just expressions. So super loose, super rough. I mean, these are pretty much gesture drawings, but they're gesture drawings of faces. And it's not that I wouldn't put a two minute pose in on my blog, it's just that none of these feel like they capture anything interesting enough that I really wanna put it. Well, you know what, this one. The fact that's, I don't know how the hell I got all of this in two minutes and had time to shade in and block the, uh, I think that the pose, this must have been the last pose of the night because there's nothing else on here. And I probably filled in the rest of this after I got the, the head in, I probably filled in that framing device and maybe added a little extra tone there. But yeah, this one I'll put in. Um, I realistically, I, even though I don't remember it, I'm betting this was a two minute pose that I worked on for probably about five minutes. Oh, and I see Travis is in the chat. What up, Travis? Thanks for dropping in. Yeah, I think in the, the coming uh, session of classes, I really need to work on pushing my speed a little bit more. I go back and forth where I spend time drawing slower and be late and go back to, you know, trying to just get everything in, into the page at one time. So, you know, this particular semester, I've been going slower and I'm going to try and speed up and just see what happens. Let the drawings get a little wonkier and, and fall apart a little bit and just go back and forth. Um, you know, just the fact that I did this little diagram of an existing drawing. Like I drew this one in class, which wasn't bad, but it feels very flat. There's no sense of volume in the actual eyes. And I think that maybe this eye is just a little bit too high. Like by just the, the width of that line down a little bit more would be perfect. But point is that the head felt a little flat to me. And then I came in here and tried to draw and put more volume in it. 
And A, I kind of messed up the roundness of her face because it was more round. I've kind of narrowed it in the, uh, in the, around the mouth. Also the fact that I put a little note in there that I also didn't get that her head was tilted down a little bit more. So, you know, these are the little subtle things that I'm trying to be aware of when I draw because if I can identify them, it means that I can fix them in drawings as I'm making it. And uh, Travis said that frame, uh, that frame brings the head forward. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the last pose that I had with the other uh, frame behind it. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason why I drew it in there. It really made the drawing go from just a quick two, five minute sketch into something that, that pops. So, and, and you know, in theory, you could do that with every single drawing and some of them it'll work, some of it won't. I actually don't tend to do that framing that often in figure drawing class. So I think when I do draw something like that, it's, it's noticeable to me and I think it really helps. And uh, when I mentioned before about uh, that previous drawing, that was what I thought was a good version of what I hope to get done in a eight minute post. This to me is a good version of, if I'm drawing heads, this is probably a good example of what I hope to capture in a five minute pose. I mean, I'm not sure where the streak that's along here came from. Maybe there was another piece of, <clears throat> of charcoal that got caught in between the pages and made a, a stripe, you know, a stripe across there. But overall, the fact that this feels like it's not overly labored, um, the only parts that really jump out and call attention to itself is around the nose and mouth, which being that it's a whole head, the features of the face would be the one thing that I would want to bring attention to. It doesn't feel like there's a, a out of, it doesn't feel like there's a large discrepancy of balance in terms of the level of detail. It's just about equal detail overall, which is a little bit of more detail in terms of hard lines, drawing your eyes to the nose and mouth. And, you know, definitely trying to keep the lighting consistent in terms of the lighting coming from the left side, you know, the back and the shoulders lit. I probably could have used a little bit more of shadow on the outside of the hair along here. But overall, I'm happy with this drawing. This feels like for five minutes, drawing ahead, this is what I get in. Um, the fact that I didn't have to draw the eyes because her hair was covered by the eyes made a big difference because you can, oh, that little thing over there was just, I don't know what that is. It's just something sitting on the surface. So no, there isn't anything on there. It's just the drawing. There we go. <clears throat> but a lot of times I could easily spend one or two minutes just drawing, just drawing eyes because, you know, eyes are the window to the soul. They're the thing that we look at. So when you look at them and they look wrong, that's the thing that you spend a lot of time trying to fix. And to be honest, even though I should get better at drawing eyes and drawing them quickly, on a lot of my figure drawings, if the eyes are open, I will leave them almost ghostly, like empty pupils, because I know that if I sit there and draw them, I will get caught up and I'll spend the entire pose just drawing the eyes. So I actually give the eyes kind of short shrift, and that isn't healthy. I should know how to draw all of them even the things that are challenging and be able to do them quickly and simply. I just haven't found the balance where I can draw those eyes without coming to a screeching halt, working on them, and then just having a couple of rendered eyes peeking out from a very simple, vague skull. A couple of those drawings slipping off of my table. <clears throat> interesting that this is from the same night as the drawing before and these are you know these feel like what my initial five minute drawings usually look like you know very rough very loose and then you know me going in doing like one two three different sketches trying to work out what was wrong with this one and that's a lot of yeah as i've mentioned in the past Right, I don't mind a bad drawing if I can learn from it. And me looking at this and analyzing, oh, I didn't get the volume of the skull right in terms of how much volume there is in the back. I didn't get the sense of the actual direction and volume of the nose, so I squared it off a little bit more in this. I feel like this one up here is actually better than the one below it. I just went in and tried to add the hair that I missed both in the original drawing and in these attempts to correct it. But her hair is kind of coming around the side but I feel like in terms of just breaking down the volumes correctly, this one, you get the sense of the spheres of the eyes within the skull. This one, I think, is probably closest to what I was going for in terms of just correcting it. If I had done this, added this hair, and drawn it on that first one, that would have been a good drawing. 
but I didn't get all those things. And that's, that's the purpose of all these little drawings on the side. And that's the purpose of when I go back and redraw my figure drawings is me trying to assess all of the elements, assessing all of the errors and saying, okay, next drawing, try to get all of these things. And see, uh, Travis said um, that I captured the emotion of the person. I think we're still talking about that previous piece where I had the black frame around it. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's, it, anytime I, I do a drawing, it actually comes out... I don't know if attractive is the word I want to use. Well, let's just say if it comes out well. I think that I'm surprised, I'm appreciative because I know that I'm always fighting like many artists. That's a really interesting thing. People talk about the thing of like, is talent, but my wife got me this awesome mug. It says, please go away, I'm drawing. Uh, if I can find it on Amazon, I'll put a uh, affiliate link in there so that people can, if they wanna buy a copy of it, then I'll get a little something something, get a taste. But oh, what well, I was going to say, talent. I think people have heard the concept before that, uh, that talent is overrated and it's really the hard. But the other side of talent is bad habits. Talent is ideally, people say it's the, your natural affinity for a certain skill. But at the same token, people have a lot of, um, of bad habits. I think many, many creative people have bad habits. As many bad habits as they're fighting against as they are talent that's buoying them up and supporting them. So in the long run, I feel like it is a, it's a constant give and take. It's, a, it's an ebb and flow. It's a yin and yang between, uh, between talent and bad habits. And in the end, the only thing that's going to defeat or the thing that's going to cut through both is hard work. And uh, Ian Rock says, some good drawings today. Nice to look at. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so with this one, I feel like on this page, this drawing definitely captured a lot of the me addressing some of the mistakes that I feel like I had on the earlier pages. Um, don't know how I feel about this one below. I may just photograph for the blog just this framing this one and cropping the other one out because there's something about, I like the way I, I framed the cheekbone in this side and the fact that the light is definitely hitting on this side and turning away, their nose is coming back out of the light. But there's something that just feels a little bit lumpy. Maybe it's because I didn't render enough detail into the, uh, the eyelid kind of creating the, um, the zygomatic arch that frames the eye the the changing of planes between the cheekbone and the nose going up again before the nose comes out of the light um there's just something about it that feels a little bit lumpy that bothers me so but yeah i'll put the top one into the blog let's see this is a pretty big stack of drawings but we're going through them um this bottom one here is not bad, but for the most part, nothing on this page really screams out to me as, well done. These, these are back to loose, just getting in the, um, trying to get basic proportions and structure. I think the places where I went in with tone to try and describe form lighting, probably being laid on top of drawings that still weren't structurally well done, they weren't completed or finished. But this is the other reason why I tend to labor over drawings is because a lot of times I'll proceed onto this stage knowing that what I've locked in is still not very solid and it's not very good yet. Um, and I feel like that's the thing that keeps me working on just the basic proportion and volumes and leaves drawings feeling loose and sketchy because I'm trying to get the, the basic structure in before moving on to, to tonal work. This was an eight-minute pose, and it definitely feels like a waste of an eight-minute pose because it feels very unfinished, um, out of proportion, not enough actual head up here, not, not enough structure and volume. 
I feel like in eight minutes I should have been able to get a lot more. This is the counterpoint to the drawing that I showed before with the uh, the older man that was an eight-minute pose. I feel like this had everything. This is like very lightly and didn't put a lot of construction lines in there. Um, if I bring this closer to the camera, you can probably faintly see like construction lines in the head. They're all there. All the lines that I put in, like doing the, the sphere of the skull, all those lines are in there, but I intentionally, part of the exercise for this night, I remember we were asked to draw everything lighter and put all the work into the, the final drawing. So this is a much better execution of the same concept. Very little construction lines, all tones that are representing volume and the edges that are actually outlying detail. So this one I will put in the blog. And you know that sometimes that's what happens is I'll do a really, really bad drawing in class and I'll spend that eight minutes saying, wow, I, I like the fact of all the things I messed up on is so present in me that the pose immediately afterwards, it's like I'm fighting to bring my A game to it. And the hope is that you go from, let's say 70% drawings you're fighting with to to 30% uh, drawings that are coming out well, that hopefully by the end of the night that's reversed and then you've got more drawings that are coming out well and you're, you're feeling it, you've, you, you've really locked into your understanding of all those elements, anatomy, proportion, volume, tone, you, that you've really locked in and now most of your drawings are having that and the drawings where it falls down are more of an aberration. They're, they're more of like, oh, that's an accident or an oops. <clears throat> and a lot of times later in class, I may not necessarily ask the instructor because I realize the reason why those mistakes happen is because I wasn't paying attention. And that's kind of the crappiest thing is when I know, oh, if I had really paid attention to what I was doing, if I had been completely focused and my mind wasn't wandering, I could have made a good drawing. Like when you look at the sense, the, the actual, like how much this head feels stretched out in comparison to the actual skull. This is a drawing that's way out of proportion. This was one where, again, I think what happened here is the model had very striking eyes and I spent most of my time drawing her eyes. I don't even think I even got properly, I feel like more of this eye should have been cropped off by the nose, but the nose, you know, I erased part of it out because I didn't feel like it was sitting on the, the volumes of the face. But this feels, it feels like a drawing that is both flat and lumpy at the same time. It's like bad oatmeal. But the fact that right after the model finished that I sat here and did this sketch analyzing it, it made me realize if I had just been paying attention, if I had been focused while I was drawing this, if I had this sense of structure, very simple, not super detailed, but just, you know, really framing out the volumes of the, the brow, the cheekbones, and that's the other thing, is that everything that's going on in here and the cheekbone that's closest to the viewer on this side, it just feels like an amorphous space. You can't really tell is it a hidden corner that's coming towards you. You can't tell whether it's flattened out. It could be concave for all you know. It's just sort of floating there. And the fact that just giving the sense of a turn on this corner here, and if you, if I, even if I had done it the opposite way, where if I had done tone on this side, tone on that side, and light on the turn, which I actually think is probably what it should have been, those things would have all been much better than what I ended up with. So, and as I always say, I'm tearing these drawings down, not because I like to flagellate myself. It's not about me punishing and beating up on myself. It's about learning what I'm doing wrong so I can do it better. And that's the thing. I, I, I always try to emphasize this, is being able to self assess and self-criticize without being a jerk to yourself. Don't be a jerk to yourself. Don't scold yourself. Just look at it. Look at your work, the stuff that you're having trouble with, and, uh, and say, all right, what's, uh, what's wrong? How do we fix it? You know, I am curious. Um, I know I was mentioning, uh, mentioning Aaron's comment earlier in the chat um, where he, he talked about his journey and not studying from the figure. I am curious, Aaron, if you're still on the, it, still in the chat, what you th what were what are some challenges that you had in terms of 
drawing the figure or improving your sense of volume or anatomy, what, what were the things that you found most challenging as you were learning your craft? And what were the things that you did to improve or correct those things? And are there things that you still find challenging? I'm, I'm curious to hear that. And I ask specifically because of how amazing your work is. So I always like to hear that from, from other artists who, whose work I admire. So, you know, I, I'm curious. If you're still in there, yeah, drop a, drop a line in the chat. I'd be curious to hear what you think, what your thoughts are. This one, pretty simple drawing. Um, I almost want to put this one in the blog because of the simplicity. It's not necessarily a great drawing. And I started putting some tone here on the, the upper part of the cheekbone to kind of separate it from the plane of this side of the cheek. Because what happens is it goes side of the cheek, then the facial plane, then the side of the nose. And I realized I started to put some tone in here. And I think if I had put a little bit more in and finished that job, this would really pop. That makes me want to include this one. And this one, not a bad drawing. Um, I think I was still dissatisfied with um, with the way that the amount of detail that was laid out across this figure, <clears throat> the way that the amount of detail was distributed. Because we you know I mentioned before, putting detail just around the nose, the eyes, and the mouth to draw the eye in. And it feels like these extra lines I had in here Yes, I needed to clearly define the separation between the hair. Like, I made the hair such a defining form of the figure because was, she was turned away. But I think that hard line really distracted and drew the eye into the center of the form instead of pulling the eye towards the, the face. And that's something that you want to keep in mind is that you can use detail, particularly hard lines, to direct the eye, not just in terms of clear, if everything else is kind of soft and you want somebody to see, let's say it's not their face, let's say they're holding a gun. You may put hard lines and distinct lines around the hand holding the gun and the gun itself. Or let's say that maybe they're a police officer and you're looking at them and you don't want to draw attention to the face, but you want to draw, they, maybe they've got their badge on a, a belt buckle. And maybe that right around, maybe it's framed by a suit jacket. And you've got hard, crisp lines there and then detail in hard lines in the, the badge that's on their belt. You know, these are things that are visual tools you can use to direct the eye. And interestingly enough, it doesn't, I don't think it works the other way around where if you have hard lines all over the figure that whatever is soft draws the eye. Now, I haven't tried that as a compositional tool because generally if everything is one way, if everything is, is um, cool blues and you put like a bright red or an orange, if you put that in an image, generally whatever is different from what surrounds it is what stands out. So logic dictates that a soft area when surrounded by hard lines still draw the eye. But for some reason, I haven't tried that and tested it in a composition myself. So it's something that I want to keep in mind. Who knows? It might be an interesting compositional tool. Generally, what I find is soft, hard area, hard lines or dark areas or contrasting areas jump out when surrounded by soft areas and areas of low contrast. Anyway, I don't think that I'm gonna put this one in the blog. And this one, yeah, this one actually feels not bad. Again, I don't know what it is about me making the faces too big. Um, normally I feel like I had gotten that under control in understanding that like we, we focus on the face as human beings, so we tend to make the face like most of the head when really the face ends up being like, well, let's see, like this guy, if you look at him, it's like it's two thirds. And maybe if you, you turn the, the skull like this, you know what, that's weird. Strong's just a little bit bigger than life size. Let's see, that's an interesting comparison. And let's see, if I move this up here and then off to the side and down a little bit. Well, I don't think necessarily that the overall head is out of proportion. I think I probably positioned the eyes too far up. 
I needed to position the eyes down. And even though her hair was cutting across, like as opposed to people that normally have hairlines that kind of like a widow's peak thing, her hair did cross low, but I think I maybe dragged it too low down there. So maybe the volume of the head itself is probably okay now that I look at this. And the real problem was the placing of the hair and the eyes. So the features would need some adjustment, but the, the head itself, yeah, the basic volumes weren't that bad. Of course, now that I look at that and make that assessment, now I don't want to put it on the blog. At first I was like, hey, this drawing's actually pretty good. I made an assessment, I'm like, mm, yeah. In fact, I may save this and later on just redraw it for my own personal pleasure personal education rather <clears throat> this one this is back to uh me thinking about the uh, the trad more stuff which and i have ion rocks to thank in ion rocks in the chat for introducing me to uh to trad more's work because i was familiar with his artwork when he did his run on ghostwriter but uh, Ion Rocks loaned me his copy of the complete um, Strange Talent of Luther, Luther Strode trade. And I read that. It was a beautiful read. It was a great story. And Trad Moore's art really blew me away. Like, just the, the consummate skill that he had while doing... It wasn't like he was doing the minimal amount of line work. It wasn't like Alex Toth was simple, super simple. But it was more sort of like, in animation, a lot of times, the challenge in animation is that when you're using fewer lines, they have to be the right line. And there was a lot of Trad Moore's work where sometimes he's doing work that was extremely detailed, but he was still doing it with simple, crisp lines, but they were the right lines. And the ability to have the right line as often as he does is, is mind-blowing for me to watch, so... That said, eh, I don't know about this one. It's no Tradmore. Um, <clears throat> this one I like a little bit better. Simpler, you know, lighter tones. I probably could have maybe darkened in again around the features to draw the eye in a little bit more. And these are all things that I know cognitively, but I don't necessarily think about while I'm figure drawing because I'm trying to move as quickly as possible. But this one feels like more of a complete five minute drawing, so. All right, we're getting down to the last few drawings here. Well, there's probably maybe 10 more drawings. And we also have about, we're at 53 minutes, so we'll probably finish right at about an hour as usual. If you guys have any questions before we, we wind up, make sure you throw them in the chat, and I'll try to get to everybody before we wrap up. Uh, yeah, this one, again, start of the class, five-minute poses that all feel. This feels like a very poor drawing of a puppet. Just you know, blocky. I think that I had made a note of really trying to use the outside of the, the ulna that runs down the, uh, the outside of your arm, that the far end of your elbow is that bone that runs all the way along the, the outside. Your, you know, your wrist is made up of two bones, the ulna and then the radius, which is on the inside, but it, uh, well, it starts out on the outside of the elbow and if your hand is like this, it stays on the outside, but if you flip over, it becomes on the inside and it forms the bulk of the wrist. But the ulna, which, you know, the elbow is a pretty significant landmark, but it comes to this tiny little, it's small, but it's a noticeable point. And I think I was trying to make it a, a, a mental note to start using that as more of a landmark in doing these drawings with the, uh, <clears throat> with the, uh, the arm and the wrist. If any of you have, take figure drawing classes in the L.A. area, you guys will know the, the great John Mackey, figure drawing uh, model, actor, performer. And these were some poses he, we were uh, studying from him that night. And, you know, I don't know how I feel about this one because I feel like 
it's not a bad drawing. It, it's it captures character and performance, but there's still some little. And honestly, it's just the turn from the wrist, from the actual palm, into the wrist that bothers me a little bit. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this one. So maybe I'll put this drawing in. And I do like this one of him down here sleeping. Um, still has some similar problems, but I, I, I like it. Here's more performance stuff. I think I like this one. It's got some drama. This one just... The pose is okay, and the, the energy is okay. I like the face, but it's just so loose and unfinished that I don't know if it's worth putting in. Let's see. Oh, I see uh, Art with Amar is in, the, is in the chat. Hey, Amar. Good to see you. Yeah, I missed last week. He asked, he said, I didn't know you were streaming today. I missed last week, and now I'm back, and I figure it's a holiday weekend in the United States. It's Labor Day. But, um... I didn't want to miss two weeks in a row. And, you know, for me, a holiday is being able to stay home and draw more. So that's, that's the big win for me. It's a day home from work means a day I get to spend with artwork. Um, so thanks for, uh, for dropping in. He said hello to everybody. Let's see here. This drawing has nice character to it. I don't know if the pose tells a story the way I would want it to. But, uh, let's see there. I don't know. We'll put it in the maybe pile, which usually there isn't a maybe pile. If I have to think about it, the answer is no. Oh, Amar said that he missed the, uh, the notifications on, uh, on the channel. Which, by the way, guys, if you were watching... Now, or if you're watching the replay later on, if, you, uh, if you're subscribed and you're not getting notified when I go live on live stream, make sure that you click the notification bell. That will actually pop up in your notifications when I'm going live, and it's usually Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, all right. And then this one, again, some character performance work. Um, there were great costumes, and we had great poses, but none of these feel particularly great to me. Now, what's interesting is I like this drawing. I'm going to put this one in, but I'm wondering if I have a strong bias towards tone and areas of like spotting blacks. As doing this, it feels complete to me, but I don't know how much of that is just because of the tone work and versus doing a drawing that feels really complete, but that's mostly lines. That's something I actually start exploring more, seeing if I can do something that's less tonally oriented, it's more line oriented, but still has what I feel like a sense of complete description of what's going on in terms of anatomy and volume and lighting. And lighting is harder to describe when you're talking about working just in line. Um, I think you can imply it more and you can you imply it also by areas in which you leave out or add details, but it is something for me to play with a bit more. And this one was one that I actually really enjoyed. He had this really cool, it was a soft hat, but it was like a conquistador's hat. And I really liked the way that, um, even though this brim on this side was also in shadow since the light was coming from here, it made a really nice contrast between the lighting here, the, the framing of the eyes with the shadow on this, and the shadow under the cheekbone. And if I had gone in here and knocked this down a little bit, Maybe I could have added a little bit of tone, but I really liked the fact that the way it's lit here really described to light to dark. So this was one where I maybe made a decision that wasn't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily be true in terms of actual lighting, but I felt like it gave an, a better visual description of the form. And I probably could have backed up the, the shadows on the backside of the hand to get the sense that they're facing away from the light too. But also the hand, if you look at the side of the hat, you know, it's a curving form and the hat was turned, if this is the shadow side, the hat was turned away, the hand was turned a little bit more towards 
Um, oh, Amar says he's been playing around with uh, Blender 2 Grease Pencil, trying to um, get good with that. He says, great, I see great potential for comic book work with, uh, within Blender as far as pencils and backgrounds. He said, I give six months to a year. I should be able to get really good stuff there. Add it to the animation and comic book workflow. Well, no, man, I, I admire you bringing in new tools and, and pushing the, uh, the boundaries and techniques. I'm not as good as that as I should be. I, for the most part, have really been just focused on mastering the, the pen and ink stuff and trying to get better at the tools that I have instead of adding new tools. But I like that you've broadened one's skill set. I think that process of always learning and trying new things keeps you fresh. And then you learn something new that you can bring back to the other tools that you use. So he says, um, you should check it out when you get some time. Uh, I, I will look into it. Thank you. So let's see here. Um, actually, both of these I really like. There was a lot of story in the pose of just having a guy who's kind of maniacally tearing his hair out and then you know just the fact of him having uh the the hood the cloak that's wrapped around and stretching his arms out almost as if begging and then there's something about um john's expression that was so sad and and pitiful in this that i felt like it the rain belonged there it just it belonged in the piece, so I just, I, I went with it and added it. And I don't usually do stuff that's that expressive when I'm doing figure drawing class, but it felt like it really worked here with, with the figure. So I think both of these will definitely go in the blog. And uh, let's see here. On these, this was pretty loose. I don't feel like I got, I'm not sure. Usually I'm able to assess what went wrong with the piece. And with this one, it just had me the whole figure, trying to pay attention to the head, working on the lighting. I think I was more concerned with trying to make a complete drawing than I was the actual details. So this was one where it's an okay drawing, but the proportion of the arm is definitely way off. Like this arm is way too large and sticking out too high above the, uh, the head. Like I almost drew it as if you're looking straight on instead of the fist coming out towards you. So the proportions are off. Um, you sort of get the sense of the volume of the head, but I think I had to decide here how much do I want to describe in terms of what I'm seeing in the lighting, in terms of how it's framing the head versus what's going to actually describe the front plane versus the, the side of the head. Whereas this one, very simple drawing, and I lost that whole arm on the side, but I decided that I wanted to really focus on just getting the head and the hand and there's more of a shrug that was going on in the shoulders, and I don't think I got that, but I really like how soft and blended, maybe this kind of ties into that grease pencil thing that, uh, that Amar mentioned, but just how soft and blended these, um, these tones are in, in, on the figure. And that's one of the things where using a four or a six B gives you some, on a, a paper that's a little bit, this is a, um, a smooth, uh, newsprint. And that's one of those things that you get where the pencil becomes a little bit slicker and it gives you like a nice soft blend, nice Gaussian blur to it when you're, uh, you're blending stuff. So just because I like the way this drawing came out, I think this is going to go in the blog. And then this was my last drawing of the night and it was not a great drawing. Sometimes you don't end on a high note. I think I was throwing so much energy into all the other drawings and then I got to the end and this last little drawing didn't really do much for me. Um, sometimes that happens. And you kind of would hope that your last drawing after a 12 week class would be a high note. Like it would capture every single thing that you have been building up towards in the, the 12 weeks. And then that last drawing would be like, finally, I did a masterpiece. Sometimes you get to the end and you say, hey, I still got a lot of work to do. That's what this drawing tells me. And that's okay because I'm gonna keep doing it. All right, so that's it for my figure drawings from the, uh, the previous August, a little bit from July maybe. So guys, thank you so much for joining me for this live stream on this uh, holiday weekend. If you would like additional bonus live streams that are exclusive for my Patreon, I do an exclusive um, live stream one per month, you can go to patreon.com slash G-E-R 
I am I. If you would like to read some of my comic books for free, you can go to comics.jeremy.net. If you'd like to purchase some of my comic books, my, uh, the first four issues of my comic book, Morning Star, uh, which is Lucifer's Fall from Heaven, told as a Western. Volume, you know, volume one, as well as my previous graphic novel, Eye of the Gods, both available on Amazon. You can go to my Amazon author page. Go to amazon.jeremy.net. So, guys, thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate you spending time. I appreciate the feedback, the conversation in the chat. You know, as always, it's great. That's it for now. Go be creative. <laughs>